So today I'm going to show you guys how you can edit like Iman Gadzi by creating AI artworks and how you can animate them using After Effects. And I'm going to show you guys two ways and one of these two ways is the best one and the most efficient one. So the first thing to do now is create AI artworks. So the first thing you'll have to do is simply go to this website called Leonardo AI. Once you're on that page, simply click on image creation right there. And this is the place where you will create your images. So this is the place to write a prompt. This is the amount of credit available. And this right there is all of the settings, like the ratio. So what we're gonna do is simply click a 16 by nine ratio, like this. And this settings right there will determine how many pictures you want per prompt. We're gonna leave it at four. And I'll go over the rest of the settings later. So now you can write the prompt that you wanna write. So I'm simply gonna write a firefighter in a forest or something. Now, once you're done with your prompt, you're gonna click on generate and it's going to cost you 24 coins. Now, what you're gonna have to do is simply wait for the images to load. As you can see, the coins level has decreased. Okay, so the images finally came, but the, pro the problem is that they're too realistic. So we're simply gonna change the style of it all. So simply go there. And as you can see, we were using this style right there, but we want a more cartoony style. So what we're gonna do is simply click on anime. And then you're gonna scroll right there and click on semi-realistic. So now you can close that off and you can simply regenerate your images. And it's gonna give you a bunch of different results in a different style. And as you can see, this is what we're looking for. So just pick the image that you like the most and download it. Now what you're gonna have to do is simply open Photoshop and you're gonna have to import the picture inside of your Photoshop. So click on open, search for your picture and select it. Now what we're gonna do is simply the layer separation to make the animation pop and be more three-dimensional. So simply select your main subject. This is the firefighter. And you, you need to make sure that the selection is good. So just zoom in and fix the imperfections. Make sure that everything is cleaned up because it really matters for the end result. While I'm doing this, I wanna say that a lot of you guys were not subscribed to my YouTube channel. And if you guys like my content and wanna see more of it in the future, don't hesitate to subscribe, it's free, and it really supports me and the channel. So here, as you can see, I'm making sure that there's no imperfections anymore. This process is really important because you don't wanna end up with a poorly masked character because it is the main focus of the video. So it will be really unfortunate if it was not really well masked. I'm just gonna do the ponytail right like that okay so i think it was the last imperfection now to isolate my character what i'm gonna do is simply click on ctrl c then ctrl v so it's gonna copy it into another layer and as you can see it's isolated now as you can see her mask is really clean and now what you're gonna have to do is simply select the background and you're gonna make a selection around the character the selection doesn't have to be really precise it can really be rough and this will allow us to remove the character from the background to have a clean slate to work with inside of After Effects. So once this is done, click on gener Generate to Fill. Click on Generate and just wait. And as you can see, the character is gone and you really have a clean background now. You can also shuffle through the options by clicking on these arrows. Just pick the option that fits you the most and simply merge the generative layer with the background so they can be together. So now as you can see, all of our layers are isolated. Now I'm gonna make sure that the head is not cropped out. So simply duplicate this subject right there. You're gonna, select, you're gonna unhide the layer that is underneath. Now pick the superior layer and scale it down. Now make a selection where the head stops. And once the selection is done, what you're gonna have to do is simply click on generate and it's gonna complete the rest of the image. So as you can see, this is a pretty clean result. Simply pick the one that you prefer the most, merge it down with the original layer. Now you can unhide the underneath layer. You're gonna pick the superior layer now and simply scale it back up. And the underneath layer acted as a guide to make sure that everything was scaled properly. But now you can delete it. We don't need it anymore. Now everything is isolated, everything is clean. What you're gonna do now is simply open After Effects, create a new project, Create a new composition, click on OK. Now what you're gonna have to do is simply pull out your files and drag and drop your PSD files inside of the timeline. Now click on OK. Now as you can see, it's not scaled all the way up, so just fix it like this. Now simply double click on the composition and you're gonna see all of your layers and this is where we can start animating. Now the first thing I'll do is simply rename all of my layers to keep it organized. So I'll just do that for all of the layers. 
okay so that's perfect now everything is organized so to do a parallax animation you're gonna have to create a 3d camera so right click on there click on you and then camera make sure that you create a one node camera and click on ok you can go ahead and go to two views mode to have a better look at your scene and simply convert all of your layers into 3d now what you're gonna do is simply select your background and push it all the way to the back like this make sure it's really far away it's gonna add some depth to the animation now click on s and simply scale it up like that so it can fill up the frame now you can go back to one view mode now you can select your 3d camera click on p add a keyframe at the first frame then go f a few frames forward add another one simply make a simple zoom with the camera inside of the scene and make sure to adjust it to your liking and for me it's they're way too far so i'm just gonna put these keyframes a little bit closer so the animation can be faster i think i'll put them a little bit closer like this okay and yeah i like this a lot so now that you have your little animation going what you're gonna do is simply select your character and now what you're gonna do is simply animate it so click on the pin tool and make a pin at the top of the head at the neck at the middle of the body and make some pins at the bottom part of the picture to make it not move at the bottom as you can see the bottom doesn't move while we move the head this is perfect so at the first frame what you're gonna do is simply tilt the head back a little bit like that then go a few frames forward then tilt the head a little bit forward and it's gonna do your whole motion so as you can see you get these keyframes going on and if it doesn't see these keyframes simply click on Q on your keyboard and now what you're gonna do is simply select these keyframes and simply copy and pass them all throughout your timeline and it's gonna loop the animation of the head i don't want my animation to be like 30 minutes long so i'm just gonna shorten the animation i'm just gonna pull this right there okay so that's perfect now what i'm gonna do is simply pull these keyframes to the end so select all of your keyframes and pick the last one and click on alt to pull them all together like that and if we play the animation back as you can see we got a pretty clean result well the only thing missing is that the fire is not animated at all so what i'm going to do is simply click on ctrl a and click on u to make everything more compact and i'm going to simply pull out my fire essential pack the link will be in my description so i'm simply going to pick one asset and i'm going to drag and drop it inside of my timeline we'll simply convert the layer into a 3d layer and try to put it underneath the subject like that and now we, we need to remove the black screen but as you can see we doesn't really have the option to do so to fix that you're gonna have to click on composition up there composition setting go to 3d renderer now you, you may see advanced 3d if you do click on classic 3d now you should have the blend modes back for your 3d layers as you can see now we can put it at screen to remove the black out of the video now i'm gonna make some slight adjustments so i'm gonna scale the fire up like that so it can look a little bit bigger and overwhelming but now what we're gonna do to add some depth we're gonna go to two views so click on one view then click on two views now you're gonna select the fire layer and push it back a little bit and it's gonna add some depth to your animation now scale it up a little bit more okay so that's perfect like that you can now go back to the one view mode and now what we're gonna do is simply loop the fire so simply select the layer of the fire duplicate it and push the layer like that the fire overlay from the pack are really loopable so you don't have to worry about that so now if we go and play it back as you can see the fire is looping perfectly and the animation is really a lot more impactful so make sure to save and you can go back from the composition and to top it all off what you can do is simply add a visual enhancer this preset right there is completely free i'm gonna leave the link in the description as you can see it automatically looks better it looks brighter it looks sharper the glow effects really add something really special to the animation and once we play it back it's really looking really good so this was the first method, which was the hardest and the longest one. So now I'm going to show you guys the second method that is the easiest one. And it's the best workflow in my opinion. So up to the next art artwork, make sure to name all of your layers to be organized, like we said before. Now I'm simply going to pull out the fire overlay pack to add a, a little bit of fire effect to the torch. I'm going to select it and drag and drop it into my timeline. Now, as you can see, we're going to put the blend mode at screen. You know just to make sure to remove the black background okay yeah this is perfect now i'm gonna simply scale it down so it can fit into the torch and by the way when you want 
when you want to scale things up in After Effects, simply click on S while selecting your layer. It's going to pull out the scaling options and it's going to save you a lot of time. Now that I'm happy with the emplacement, what I'm going to do is simply duplicate the layer of the fire like we did before and simply push each of these layers back to make the animation loop. And now what I'm going to do is simply make my animation shorter by decreasing this thing right there. I'm going to pull it towards the distort like that. Now, I'm, well, now what I'm going to do is simply select all of the fire layers. I'm going to pre-comb them. So Control Shift C, click on OK go back and simply change the screen mode again now let's animate right uh, with this tool called 3d5 pro you can click on that button right there and the whole 3d scene will be set up for you as you can see the 3d camera was created the background was pushed back and every layers were separated into the 3d space so you didn't have to do anything manually saves a lot of time and if you care about your time you should definitely invest into the tool now to fix the background simply click on scale background right there and that's perfect so now i'm going to make sure that the camera is closer so i'm going to simply play with a slider like that now i'm going to add some shake so click on add shake and it's going to add some shake to your animation it's basically a lifesaver so now just select the 3d camera and make a simple animation like this really simple now i'm going to play it back real quick and as you can see in a couple of clicks we got an animation in motion and if you want to get this tool, what you can do is simply go into my description because you can get a huge deal on the script, on the fire overlay pack and on some 3D models that you can all get for $50 only because these assets are worth well over $100. So let's get back into the tutorial. So now I'm going to add some text. I'm simply going to write whatever like caveman adventure. Now I'm simply going to make sure that the text is converted into a 3D layer. So I'm going to click on that. Click there. Now simply click on P and make sure you can see it in your scene like that. Place it correctly. Now when you once you play your animation, you can have some titles going on. You can add some pictures. You can add whatever you want. Now I'm going to play the animation back to see how it looks. It looks pretty decent. I personally want to add some depth of field to the, to the animation. So what I'm going to do is simply select the camera, double click on it. Okay, simply go there. Once this is clicked, simply allow depth of field. You can also mess up with the settings to see what you like the most. So I'm simply gonna tweak this to see if I like it or not. Okay, I like it like that. I'm gonna click on OK. And I'm simply gonna play my animation back. And the depth of field really adds a lot more of realism and depth to the animation overall. So I really suggest you to add some depth of field every time you use a 3D camera. So now we can go back to the composition and you already know what we're going to do. We're going to add the final touch. So just add an adjustment layer and put the visual enhancer to your project. And it was it for today's video. I hope you guys learned a lot. Now you know how to make some animation like Iman Gazi do in, inside of his videos. And if you want more tutorials like this, don't hesitate to leave a comment, leave a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you guys in another video.